From downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Well, take a look at this. Rain is on the way, and you know what? Here at the noon hour, we have already set a new record high for the day. I'll have your forecast just ahead. Live in Southgate, where a two-year-old has been shot, along with a 16-year-old girl at a house today. At noon, police are telling us actually two people are at this home firing shots. We'll have the latest. And breaking news, a sinkhole has led to a state of an emergency in Frazier, forcing families from their homes. Now the mayor looking to calm concerns in that community. That update topping the news here at noon. That massive sinkhole damaged one home in Frazier, and that was forced the evacuation of 21 other homes on Christmas Eve. Right now, city officials are updating everybody at City Hall. Our Coco McAvoy is there now. And uh, Coco, what are we hearing from the mayor and city leaders? That's right, Hank. So this city council meeting, this emergency meeting that was called, it is packed with residents, all of them wanting answers. And perhaps one of the biggest things that's come out of this so far is city officials, they're saying that people that live on Eberlion Street, that's that street that's been very impacted by this. They've been evacuated, 22 families displaced. They're saying those people will be able to live back in their homes in about two weeks. However, they're still going to be watching those three houses, the house that has that is right next to that sinkhole that's been damaged. The house next door, also the house across the street. They're saying those people still will not be able to inhabit their homes and they're not sure when they will be able to go back. But one of the city engineers, Scott Lockwood, addressed the residents regarding the latest on the sinkhole. He acknowledged the fact that the sinkhole has eliminated city services to residents. He says they're working to fix that. He also says this all started because there was a failure in the interceptor. And what that means is the 45 foot deep sewer on 15 mile road that collapsed. How that happened, they don't know the extent of that collapse. They also don't know that. But something that a lot of people are remembering is the fact that this is the third time that that line has collapsed. And what they're saying is, you know, a city council member is wondering if that had anything to do with this current collapse. And she asked Lockwood that. So take a listen. From what we are still paying for from 14 years ago when the whole 15 mile collapsed, is this something associated or connected to that original collapse? And if so, why wasn't this being monitored? The answer, I mean, the simple answer to your question without having the answers to exactly what's going on there is no. So something else that engineer Lockwood mentioned is he believes that this current sinkhole, it's going to be bigger than the one in 2004. So, of course, as soon as I get off air with you, I'm going to run back into this meeting and we'll have another update for you at 4 o'clock. Hank? Thank you very much for that uh, live update. We appreciate it right now. We have information regarding a boil water alert. It is over now in the city of East Point. Saturday, right around dinner time, the entire city was left without any water. The loss of water was caused by a car crash that took down power lines at the intersection of 8 Mile and Gratiot. Now, that crash caused the city's water and pumping station to lose complete power, but that situation has now been resolved. Well, time now to uh, get you updated on a developing story, one out of Southgate, where a toddler and a teenager were shot on Christmas night. It happened at a home in the Dix Toledo North Line area. Look for Sean Lay is live and Sean, I understand that we have some new information from police. Latest a two year old little girl going into surgery at this noon hour for a graze to her face from a gunshot. A 16 year old teen also inside the house behind me. She had a bullet lodged in her wrist. Here's what police are saying that everyone involved in this are a, is a relative, all, everyone related in a very bizarre incident, which can be described as a gun battle. Someone firing shots and someone coming out and firing back at that shooter. This is the time where everybody, you know, you're celebrating, you know, family and friends and for something like this to happen is very traumatizing. Amy Wade woke up to gunshots just before 11 last night. She could hear them being fired on her street, Agnes Street in Southgate. The first thing this mother of five thought of was to check to make sure her kids were okay. Scary because check my kids, make sure like no stray bullets or, you know, things like that. 
Her kids were fine. Two kids three doors down were not. Police confirming to Local 4 that a man drove up to this home last night. They say he is a member of the family that lives here, and he started firing a gun into the home. This shot went right through the front door, grazing the face of a two-year-old little girl inside as a 16-year-old girl was picking the child up, the bullet then striking that teen in her wrist. Neighbor Ashley Dent says the gunman had been drinking. My grandfather came over, I guess, and uh, started shooting. He was intoxicated. Alcohol is definitely involved. There's more. Another member of the family inside the home then came out and also fired a shot, striking the first gunman in the leg. Both now are in police custody at this hour. All right, back here live. So here's the latest from public safety. They have two men in custody right now. They're going to present the case to the prosecutor's office. Woman came out of the house not long ago saying that the two year old uh, is going to be just fine and that 16 year old should be released any time now. We're live in Southgate tonight. Sean Lee, Local 4. A developing story right now in Clinton Township where police now have a person of interest in custody in connection to a murder of a woman. The 45 year old victim was found dead last night inside an apartment on Garfield just north of 15 Mile. Her name has not yet been released and the cause of death has not yet been determined. But police are calling this a homicide. No word on a person of interest in relation to this crime. Also developing right now in Mount Clemens, police are now looking for the person who shot one man, leaving him critically injured. This happened about 1.30 this morning on the 100 block of South Main Street near Gratiot Avenue. That's where deputies found the 44-year-old victim lying on the ground. He was transported to the hospital. Right now, his condition is unknown. Investigators still working to cause the find the cause of a fire that took place in Detroit. That fire erupted about 3.30 this morning at a home on Indiana Street that's near Wyoming Avenue on the west side. After the flames were extinguished there, firefighters found remains belonging to a man inside the burned out home. He was located in the living room. His identity has not yet been released. All right, time for a check of weather, and here's some good news if you like milder temperatures, because Paul says we could get into the 50s today. Sounds impossible for December. Yeah, some of us are already in the 50s. In fact, I tell you, Hank, about 20 minutes ago, I saw a 55 degree reading at Metro Airport. Right now it says 53, but if we hit that 55, if that wasn't an erroneous reading, we've already tied our record for the day. But take a look, 57 in Dundee, 57 in Monroe, 50s in Dearborn, Livonia, Ferndale, City Airport in Detroit at 54 degrees. And oh, you poor folks north of I-69, I'm telling you, you had freezing rain last night while the rest of us had just rain. You're still hovering around 40 at Sandusky. Now keep in mind, some of these reporting stations update more frequently than others. That could explain some of the difference in temperatures. But all of us, well above average for temperatures right now. And you can see the rain, very nice line of showers coming in. And if we extend the view back down to the south, Pretty good little slug of moisture here, so we'll get into some steady rain as we move into the afternoon. And then once this cold front passes by, you're going to see some pretty significant changes. So for those of you who are maybe heading out to the mall this afternoon, you know, maybe it's about 2, 3 o'clock, you're heading out and you, it feels mild out. You're not thinking about putting on a jacket or anything. Well, these temperatures are certainly mild enough where you might not want that jacket except for the rain. But by this evening, after 6 o'clock, temperatures are going to crash very, very quickly. And then it's back to reality. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. I'll have your four zone forecast as well. But if you can't wait a few minutes, we always have the four zone on clickondetroit.com. Just go to the weather page and hit the little button that says four zone weather. I'll have the rest of the forecast for the week ahead in just a bit, Hank. Paul, thank you. Are you ready for some football? Big week for the Detroit Lions coming up with the playoffs a possibility and two games in the next seven days. Up first, big game tonight, Monday Night Football. The Lions taking on the Cowboys down in Dallas. Kickoff for that game tonight at 8.30. But win or lose, the NFC North title will be decided next weekend here in Detroit at Ford Field. You can watch all the action as the Lions take on the Green Bay Packers with the division on the line. That game only on Local 4. That is Sunday kickoff at 8.30. Watch Football Night in America, and that will begin with the pre-show at 7 p.m. Still to come here at noon, Starbucks offering free coffee through the end of the year. How you can score some, all the information coming up. Plus, great strides in the battle against ISIS. What is next for troops on the ground as they work to control the terror organization?
To follow breaking news in Frazier, where we've learned the massive sinkhole that's forced families from their homes is now expected to close 15 mile road for months. It's so crews can repair that collapsed 11 foot sewer line that has buried 55 feet below the ground. Right now, 22 families currently displaced. We are told they should be able to return to their homes within about two weeks. Save more. It's an around the clock mission to piece together a deadly puzzle. Hundreds of emergency workers from around the world scouring frigid waters right now, salvaging what they can of what remains after a Russian military plane crashed into the Black Sea on Sunday. All 92 people on board dead. That plane departed from Sochi, bound for a military base in Syria. But just two minutes after taking off, the plane plunged into the Black Sea in near perfect weather conditions. Russian officials say pilot error or a technical problem are likely to blame. At this point, there's been no sign that this was a terrorist act. Iraqi officials will resume their push against ISIS inside Mosul in the coming days. That's according to a U.S. senior commander. Elite Iraqi soldiers have taken a quarter region of that Mosul district. Iraqi's Joint Military Command said Iraqi forces killed 97 ISIS militants in eastern and southern Mosul on Sunday. The militants were killed in three different attacks. Fans around the world, they are mourning the loss of pop superstar George Michael. Fans and well-wishers have been paying tributes, leaving flowers outside the singer's home in England. He died on Sunday at the age of 53 due to heart failure. According to his manager, the confirmation clears up earlier statements by police that called Michael's death unexplained but not suspicious. Today marks the first day of Kwanzaa. The holiday starts today, December 26th, and ends on January 1st. So have a great holiday if you are celebrating the start of Kwanzaa today. Still to come here at noon, why many of you will be hitting the stores today. If you like to save some big money, we have what you need to know after the break. Paul? Well, Hank, I tell you, a very dynamic storm system to our west means we have very dynamic weather for us this afternoon. Big changes coming our way, and you'll want to hear about it. I'll have the details just ahead. Tonight, you can't stop the beat. It's Hairspray Live at 8, then at 11. Does eating certain foods increase acne? Well, new research suggests the answer is yes. And that triggers a cascade of events that actually causes acne to flare up. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. See which foods could bring on breakouts, including a big one that might surprise you. Tonight at 11 on Local 4 News. Real patients help me tell real stories because I understand what they're really dealing with. In good health, the doctor is always in for you. When a car is a All right, time to talk a little weather. Paul is here at the desk and it's going to be in the 50s today. This is good news for a day. That's fine. We'll <laughs> okay. take a day. Okay, we'll take a yeah, little reprieve. Sure you know, if we can have these little reprieves throughout the winter, I think a lot of people could handle winter a lot better. But yeah. take a look. I mean, Hank, you got to see this. I mean, when you when you, you compare it to 24 hours ago, look at this. Parts of the area are anywhere from 14 to 23 degrees, okay, seven. Uh, we'll start with seven at Gross Eel, but seven to 23 degrees above where we were 24 hours ago. And the reason that Gross Eel is lagging behind is you're getting your wind off the lake right now. That's keeping you a whole lot cooler. So that's why your current temperature is a little lower. In fact, speaking of those current temperatures, take a look. So Gross Eel, you're at 42 degrees because of the wind off the lake here, but you get to Metro Airport, it's 53, 53 in Detroit, 50 in Mount Clemens, 48 in Port Huron. I know we're still lagging behind in Sandusky. Now, maybe it's possible the thermometer hasn't quite uh, updated up there at that reporting station, but we're going to keep an eye on that. But all of us are well above average for the day, and in fact, many of us will be near record high territory, if not above that. All right, so here are the showers coming into the area. You saw our reporters, uh, you saw Coco and Sean with uh, umbrellas in their live shots. So you have the rain that's moving in, and there's more where that came from. You can see a pretty good steady rain that's actually moving into the area. So even if you're not getting a steady rain right now, you will. Don't worry, you will. All right, now I want you to see on this uh, wider view, you can see a swirl here. So here's that big storm that caused the blizzard conditions across the northern plains over the weekend. I'm going to switch over to wind now, and when you look at the wind, you can see that swirl. So you can see the storm there. That you almost don't need explanation for. A couple of other features of note. You notice if you look, there's like a bit of a triangle right here over us with the winds coming out of the south. Well, that's the warm sector. That's pushing in the warm air we have. And then you get back to the west, and you notice those south winds all of a sudden kind of fade out and get replaced by these west winds here. Well, 
that is the cold air that's going to be coming in with the cold front. So here's the warm sector right here. The front is through by late afternoon, so mild for the afternoon. Temperatures crashing this evening, and then we're in the dumper with the cold temperatures for the day tomorrow. It's going to be windy. The wind chill will be uh, in the 20s tomorrow, so just get ready. That's going to be a reality check. Today is just one day. Today's an anomaly. So four zone forecast, 58 for a high in Detroit. Dearborn, 57 over in Romulus. Our south zone, yeah, we're going to see some 60s right along the state line and some of you not too far behind, but the western part of the zone 53 54 degrees. You got the rain earlier and you'll get the cold front earlier as well. Same story with the west zone. You're going to get the cold front earlier, so only mid 50s for you. But in our north zone, once we get to the east and especially the southern part of the zone, uh, 57 degrees or so for a high. And we're still hoping that we'll hit 50 up in Sandusky. We're trying. I'm really pulling for you folks. We're going to try and get you to 50 this afternoon. So 57 today dropping all the way to 33 tomorrow and again it's going to be a breezy day and we're going to have some pretty good wind gusts uh, later on today as well with the cold front maybe 30 to 40 mile an hour gusts and maybe even stronger this evening but then we quiet down for the middle part of the week temperatures back to average i don't think it's going to be a big deal but we could have some snow showers moving in in the new year's eve proximity hank and we'll keep an eye on that during the week and certainly keep you updated Paul, sounds good. Thank you. Well, are y'all shopped out yet? If you didn't get worn out from all the holiday shopping already today, maybe one of the best days for you to shop and score a good deal. There are plenty of deals out there to be had after Christmas for those brave enough to face the busy crowds yet again. The stores will be busy with people exchanging gifts that they receive during the holidays, but also many people will be out there looking for a good deal. The lotion now is uh, like $3, 313 you know, it's very nice, you know, very nice uh, uh, price. Before there was a $12, $12 each one. So are you going to, are you buying in bulk or anything? I buy almost uh, eight pieces right now already. Plenty of stores will be offering many items at highly discounted prices in order to make room for new inventory and next season's merchandise. If you're planning on taking advantage of all of these after holiday deals, you may want to think about getting to the mall sooner rather than later before all of those bargains are gone. Happy shopping. Still to come, free coffee. How does that sound through the end of the year? We're going to tell you how you can score some free coffee at Starbucks after the break. Replay song. We're following breaking news right now out of Columbia. That is where investigators have found the charter plane that crashed last month, killing 71 people on board, including members of the Brazilian soccer team. Uh, that plane, as you may remember, ran out of fuel en route from Bolivia to Colombia when it crashed. Well, if you'd like some free coffee, you may be in luck because Starbucks is in the middle of its 10 days of cheer. Yeah, who doesn't want that? They've been giving away a free tall espresso drink to customers from 1 to 2 p.m. at 100 of its coffee houses each day in what they're calling pop-up cheer parties. There you go. The store yeah. locations change each day. A link to all the information is on our website. Click on Detroit.com. You'll find it under the consumer tab. The 10 days of cheer event runs through January 2nd. I don't drink coffee. I wonder if they do it with hot chocolate for me. I think you got, well, maybe you got to see the coffee. I mean, maybe the if you do the lattes and the things, it seems like it could get a little pricey. Yeah. But get a coffee. Enjoy some coffee, Paul. I like coffee. <laughs> but you don't need it today. Today, we've got nice weather. Yeah, today it's going to be in the 50s this afternoon for most folks. Uh, up in Santa Lac County, maybe upper 40s, but I think we're all going to be uh, well into the 50s. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be one day, and then we're going to go right back down by this evening, by literally after dinner time, back into the 40s. Perfect. Still not bad. Paul, thank not you very bad. much. And thank you for tuning in. All the news, weather, and traffic you need 24-7 at clickondetroit.com. We're back here today at 4.